All right, who's ready for the stream tonight, guys? We are getting ready to unbox a new gizmo to add to the 3D printing shop. What is that gizmo? Well, we're going to get the Mole 3D scanner opened up tonight, and we're going to take a look at it. We're not going to get it hooked up. That'll be a video, but we are going to take a look at this scanner. So we're going to get it out because 3D scanning is part of the game, um, especially if you want to recreate something. And I'm going to explain as we go through why I have a 3D scanner and why we're going to use one. So um, as we start really kind of digging further into the 3D printing journey, um, which is going to be somewhat I talk about here too, because summer's coming, which always creates a disruption of creating content and stuff like that. Um, but also some changes that I'm going through to that's going to possibly allow for more content to be created and me to spend more time with you guys. So um, kind of one of those things. But the main goal tonight is to get this scanner out of the box, get a first look at it, kind of get the first impressions, first feel of this thing out of the box and kind of see what all we can do. And of course, you know, this re will be recapped in a video. Um, but also hopefully the video will show the first uses of the scanner and stuff like that. But more particularly why I want a good high resolution scanner in this business. Um, and in all honesty, it's sitting right over there on that desk is those Gundam models and things like that. <sighs> you know, you want to make models that look battle damaged and stuff like that, but you don't want to destroy the model. That kind of just sucks destroying the model, right? Um, to get what you want, especially when like that model over there is almost a hundred dollars for that Gundam. Um, you know, Warlord Titans, the Doom guy making him look battle damaged or even these little mechs that I've been working on. Um, you, you buy the model, you damage it, and then you ruin a perfectly good model. What's the point in that, right? Well, that's kind of what I'm looking at the 3D scanner for is to, you know, if I want to have a battle damaged arm on one of these models is scanning the arm, recreating the arm as a 3D model, doing the battle damage and then printing it out and putting it on that model, whether I use magnetics or, you know, it actually becomes part of the model. So let's let's, let's start getting this thing out of the box. So... All right, you guys can see it's a fairly good sized box. Lots of goodies in there, but, and well wrapped, well packaged. Um, ah. All right. First step get rid of plastic. Hey, Douglas, how's it going, man? How's your journey with Creality going? Or are we no longer with Creality? There's the better question. So I'm getting this guy out of the box. Ooh, that is a nice sturdy box. Now this is the uh, Mole 3D Scanner Premium box. And well, say goodbye to box, guys. <laughs> As we do, we throw the box when we're done with it. So you guys can see very nice case, very well put together. Let's get in here and start looking at the goodies of this. So you guys kind of heard my explanation of why I wanted the scanner. And it stands true. I just want to use it to be more creative um, and not destroy expensive models. So the premium kit comes with a really nice turntable that will connects to the scanner. We've got a tripod for the scanner that it will sit on and can go in conjunction with the turntable. Now here is the scanner itself. Nice, lightweight. This thing is not very heavy at all. I love the grip so that I can hold it in my hand. That's really nice etching at the top there. Uh, this thing looks pretty darn cool, to be honest. Let's kind of take a look at what else is in here. We've got a extender 
or a monopod for you to hold the scanner with, the USB cable to connect the scanner to the uh, turntable, then you've got the actual scanner cable to connect this to your PC and power. So this one is not a remote battery operated one. This one does require power. And here's your power cord. Huh. I wonder why they asked again. I don't know what's going on with Creality. This seems kind of weird. And we've got all of our different power ports for all the different color countries. Um, of course, we're going to choose the U.S. power port because we're in the U.S. Make sure I get this right. Because <laughs> the way I've been going lately, I'm getting a lot wrong lately. Oh. Uh, I was the smart man, I'd read the instructions. Or I just fiddle with it. It's weird for Creality to give a runaround like that. I'm going to be honest, Suggles. So I've never had them do that with me. So that is kind of concerning that they're doing that. Um, make sure you're replying to them. Keep after them. Um, don't let them sit for two weeks. Nag them. Nag. Email every day. Reply back. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, you, you'll, you'll get your, you'll get your part. You keep doing that. All right. And then we've got a pivot and an additional set screw. So awesome. Lots of goodies in here. Loving the case. These will never be used again and taken out. Um, so you got real nice cabling, um, that connects in. So this is a scanner that requires a PC connection. Um, this is not um, not really a portable scanner. Uh, but, uh, don't worry guys. The more portable one is here too. Uh, Creality also sent their CR scan ferret, but that's going to be for another day. Oh, so... Yeah, there's the goodies. The scanner just, it's hard to believe the resolution and stuff that you can get with these scanners and look how small they've gotten. Um, just in a couple years, they've shrunk and the price tag has shrunk too, which is nice. Um, if you guys had saw my original CR scanner, I mean, that thing is like that long. I mean, that deep, it's huge. Um, where the same technology basically is right here in my hand. Um, which makes it really easy to, you know, run this around and scan something. I like the attachable turntable that will actually, I think it is supposed to connect to the scanner, or at least that's how the Creality one used to be, but I don't see where this would actually plug in. So this just might be a rechargeable turntable, but I don't see a control on it either. So I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> There could be a cable I'm missing here that does all that. But looking at it, you can see that the scanner is just very small, very compact. Um, we'll definitely have to toy around with it, see what we can uh, scan. And uh, basically, what toys can we make with this? Um, and just kind of start working around on it. At Douglas, hopefully they will get back to you, or if I... If I were you at this point, if they're running you around, return the dang thing and get the printer, get a printer that you wanted. Um, cause that's not cool that they're support, they're losing their own business on that one. So hound them a little bit more then don't let that thing go past its return window and get you the printer that you know is going to do well. Um, but you guys can see, I mean, that is just it's gorgeous work, gorgeous craftsmanship. Um, that's beautiful. I'm, uh, I'm excited to play with this. Um, of course I've got to download all the software and all that stuff and get it in my computer. 
but loving the case. Oh wait, I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> oh, here's the top of the turntable. So we'll set the scanner over there. So basically, that sits on top of the turntable to allow it to uh, have bigger models on it. There was a whole part of this case I was missing. <sighs> then you've got the the manual, um, let me know everything in here, the packing list, and the QR codes to go download the software, where to get them from, uh, JM Studio and stuff like that so I can start scanning with it. So be staying tuned for that video coming soon uh, where we start showing off some of the scans and stuff that we start playing with. So that is really neat. That's a in very interesting cable. I see some flaws. I see some bent pins in my future, unfortunately. But I do like that they took the time to make the pull uh, connection and install that on there. Power USB to the computer. That does make me question, how does the turntable connect to the scanner? Oh, the turntable is controlled by the computer. Okay. Ah, well, I'll have to keep a look at it. Well, and it's hard to believe this scanner is under $400. It's just shy of $400 right now. So, I mean, these used to be thousands of dollars. And uh, I know the Creality one was just, when I got it was right around 700 and this one was right around the $400 price point. But I mean, there's apps now for your phone that you can do, it uses the LiDAR on the iPhones to do similar things and create the 3D models too. Um, but yeah, I'll have to get this installed. Um, make sure my uh, Windows PC and my Mac, uh, I'll have to pick one. Um, I've got a MacBook Pro that's a smaller, uh, 13 inch that's a lower powered version that I may actually it may just become the scanning PC but it looks like as long as I can find an outlet for my computer it looks like I can do uh, I can scan just about anywhere I go which is gonna be awesome because everything is awesome no I did I just didn't go into the Lego movie I'm sorry I don't copyright strike me please uh, <laughs> but I mean, there's a lot here that gives a lot of functionality and ability to someone who's wanting to use it like I am. I'm wanting to recreate pieces of models or, you know, for example, this guy, I'd love to scan that top carapace and battle damage the tar out of it um, and make it replaceable. So whether by magnets or some other way to attach it to the model. And basically this lets me scan that, create the 3D model, battle damage it before I even print it, and then actually create the print, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me. So I'm gonna put the scanner back in its case here, maybe. Which way, okay, like that. Okay, so we'll put the scanner back away. So we went through the scanner a lot faster than I thought we would. Um, the turntable, not sure what all the lettering means. I'll figure that out later. But uh, getting a Jeep, cool. All right, and what's really nice, like I said, this thing packs in really nice into the bag and makes it really handy to go on the go. So this will be a fun video that will be coming up and we will definitely be having some fun with this, so. Yeah, that's the 3D Maker Pro. That's a kind of the first look at it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, Douglas, I'm kind of excited to hear you getting a Jeep. That's a lot of fun, man. Um, also, just kind of upcoming stuff. You guys may be seeing some more live streams at different times. I'm going to try a few things out. Um, video content is going to get back to normal. 
Um, I know I've been kind of everywhere lately, um, or like last Friday, you didn't even get a video. And I apologize about that. Just life has been kind of hectic and crazy, but we're going to be getting that back under control and get back to the content that I know you guys enjoy. Um, I'm also kind of going to be going mobile quite a bit here. Um, so keep stay tuned for Friday's video that's coming up this Friday with the Evo Go Bag, um, where I have now put together my portable hobby kit um, and some of the stuff that I threw in there um, to kind of make that a lot more fun um, and make it to where even when I go on vacation or go somewhere, I can continue to bring the hobby. So next week, or maybe in a video, I may just do a video on it. Uh, we're also going to see our, the CR scan ferret out and kind of take a look at that. So lots of fun stuff coming up on the channel. Uh, the E, I think it's E3D make their 17 inch galaxy one printer. Um, should be coming soon. Um, I'm waiting for that to be shipped. Um, that, but that has been secured so and guaranteed. So hopefully that will be here in the next few weeks as well, along with the curing station that comes with that machine. So um, I'm curious to see if they actually step the curing station up big enough to handle what, the, what that 17 inch build plate from that printer can do. Um, also, I know I've had a lot of people asking about the CRM4 profile. We'll have a video coming up on that very soon of how I got the settings that I've gotten so far and uh, what, how to do it yourself. Another conversation that we've had. A lot of you were interested in Mandalorian uh, gear. So this helmet has been pulled out. It is in rough, rough shape. This was done by the CRM4 as I get the profile cleaned up. We're going to clean this up. We're going to make it look good. And we're going to do a Mandalorian helm. Um, we'll see. I may actually even give this one away. So we'll kind of do that. Make sure you're a member for that one because they will get uh, get extra extra jumps into that raffle probably. So... But uh, yeah, I'm thinking we're going to make this helmet look really good. You guys can see some of the flaws in it. We're going to get rid of that. I'm going to show you how to get rid of all the flaws, make this thing look smooth and get that nice, pristine look. So uh, projects coming up. Doom guy has not gone away. Um, we're just taking a night off from him tonight. Um, but I will show. Oh. I will show that the uh, the blue work that we did on him last week, you can see how beautiful that visor came out with just that one blue and the under, the darker undercoats underneath it. That visor came out beautifully. Um, I couldn't be happier. I want to do a little bit of white work into it. Um, and then next week, we're going to focus on this big honking gun so and start doing some of the wash details onto him. Um, and do some orange work, but I'll be honest, my hands just are not my friends today. <laughs> and I just don't trust myself to paint, to uh, really jump into the detail of painting today. So kind of one of those things that every once in a while creeps up on me. is a little bit of a problem uh, that my hands shake uh, bad enough that I just don't feel comfortable um, doing it. So... Uh, but we do have a lot coming up, a lot of goodies. I hope you guys will stick around. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to do a little bit of green work on Doom Guy's weapon that goes over his shoulder. I am going to do that tonight. Um, and then, uh, as I said, probably just a short stream tonight. Uh, that E3D make, that was kind of my goal was to get that out of the box so I can find a spot in the house and set it up and actually kind of play with them play with the 3d scans a little bit so one of those fun fun things and if you guys are passing through the stream and made it this far make sure you hit that like button because uh, those likes help us out tremendously it makes youtube see that we uh we are loved
And that's that pro acryl green laying down really, really nicely. I'm just going to use the air from the airbrush to kind of push the paint around a little bit, thin it because this thing has been subjected to heat because it's a flamethrower basically. Kind of make that green look kind of flaking away a little bit. Bubbled. Um, Hopefully next week we'll uh, we'll uh, be able to uh, attach that to his shoulder. Hey Redtail, this is actually two booths put together, so um, it works really well. Um, I enjoy it, um, and it comes in real handy on days that I'm doing a lot of airbrushing. Um, it really helps out, and also go check out my Instagram for the one that I built out in my garage. That is huge. And uh, I used a box fan and filters to really kind of create an area where, especially if I'm like you know, using the rattle can, stuff like that, that, uh, that lets me do that work out there too. So um, that way I don't have to go stand outside and, uh, and do the rattle can. especially on days like today where it was raining. <laughs> Just getting the airbrush cleaned up here a little bit. I need to, I've been taught a new method, but I need to go buy, buy what they, what my uh, teacher told me I should be using. So to clean out the airbrush, but I appreciate appreciate it. Red tail. I'm a, uh, like everybody here, I'm always learning, trying to pick up something new. So, but yeah, I mean the Sotar 2020, it lays it down really nicely, gives a good clean look. I think I'm going to mess with him a little bit tonight. Get some of my favorite pro acryl dark silver in there. Get it all nice and shook back up. I haven't used it in a little while. So what's everybody else doing this fine week and this wonderful coming weekend? Because we are almost already to May this month, this year, guys. I mean, we're almost through them through half the year. It's a little creepy that the year's going by this quick. Granted, there's good things about it going by so quickly. But, uh, yeah. Douglas, that's a good thing to be doing, man. Saving money is always good. I'm kind of in a saving every penny mode that I can as well. Well, hopefully the call flow will pick back up. It, you know, even my time working in a call center, the it was an ebb and bud. 
Some days were worse, some days were good. Basically, I'm just using the dark silver one on top of the mechanical Mechanicus Gray, or the uh, not Mechanicus Gray. This is a uh, lead belcher. It the way that I have it thinned right now, it's going to settle in and create some really cool metallic highlights for all this machinery part, which I want. But I'm also just kind of using it to clean up where the blue laid down, where it shouldn't have. I really kind of start cleaning this guy up and pull that metallic look and highlights back into it. I've already run through it. The only problem is right now I've made this a little too thin, but with the way I'm using it, the thinness is actually good. Um, Cause I want it to lay down with the, with the gray, not overpower it. That just cleaned up that metal infrastructure really, really nicely. Really happy about that. Yeah, that's a smart move, Douglas. Putting money away and having a larger down payment is always a good thing because that can help with interest rate. That can help with, oh no, we're turning into a financial decision. I'm so sorry, folks. <laughs> um, it can help out a lot having the better down payment. So definitely a, a smart move on your part, Douglas. So you keep right on marching through and doing what you're doing, Douglas. Make him a little bit different than his brother. Congratulations, man. I'm sitting right about the same point right now. So and if you're new here too, go check out the model channel and subscribe over there too, guys. The channel, I know it hasn't been doing much, but it's about to get a lot more going on with it. So Make sure you're subbed over there to see kind of new things because after the way Picard's finished, I'm kind of inspired to do a Enterprise D build um, and other things like that. And I'm after Friday, I'm going to have a lot more time so uh, to do such things. So going to be uh, a lot of fun coming up. So definitely stick around for that and... Uh, join me for those. So really appreciate everybody joining up tonight. Um, I know this was kind of a short one. I'm kind of, uh,
kind of at a point today where I think I probably better just ought to go take a break and lay down for today. So um, hope you guys enjoyed. We got some work done on Doom Guy's flamethrower. We got the E3D Maker out, and we got some some uh, metallic works done on this guy that uh, I'm about ready to just start uh, hand brushing him. So got some cool stuff coming with him. I kind of like the way that silver laid down on the blue. So that's going to work really, really cool. So I appreciate everybody that joined tonight. Um, I know this is kind of a short one. I uh, hope you guys like the look of the E3D Make uh, mole scanner. Uh, more to come on that. Of course, we've got to unbox the ferret as well. So stay tuned and subscribe for a video for that. And uh, lots more stuff coming down the pipeline. And as you guys saw, we're going to do another Mandalorian build. So fun stuff coming. But I appreciate everybody. I'm going to end the stream here tonight. And we will see you guys all at least next week in the next stream. So thank you guys. Appreciate you. We'll see you in the next stream.